In 1897, the Queensland Parliament passed the Aboriginals Protection and Restriction of the Sale of Opium Act. This act controlled where Indigenous people in Queensland could live and work, and many aspects of their day-to-day -day lives. Under the act, government settlements or reserves for Aboriginal people were established in Queensland, including Baramba. Aboriginal people were forcibly removed from across Queensland and brought to Baramba through until 1971. Lacking adequate housing, sanitation, education and medical facilities, Baramba suffered a high death rate in its initial decades and epidemics were regular occurrences at the reserve. Later, in 1932, the name was changed to Sherberg. In 1984, the Queensland Government conferred powers and responsibilities, similar to those of local councils, to Aboriginal councils. In 1986, the Queensland Government transferred the reserve to the trusteeship of the Sherberg Aboriginal Council. A sign on entry to the town reads, Many Tribes, One Community. Sherberg has a population of 1,354 and is located 170 kilometres northwest of Brisbane. Hi, I'm Peter Arndt, Executive Officer of the Catholic Justice and Peace Commission in the Archdiocese of Brisbane. I have my guide dog, Mac, beside me, and also Marie Rose, Chair of the Commission, and Ravina Waldron, Coordinator of the Archdiocese and Murray Ministry Team. I'd like to begin by asking Ravina to acknowledge country, please. Thank you. I'd like to uh, take a moment of silence as we remember our footprints that have travelled this beautiful sacred ground that we gather on. This, ga this land that we're gathering on today is the Yagara people's land, and the place of whirling waters, which is better known as Wollongabba. I acknowledge our traditional custodians of the land, the caretakers of this land, and I pay my respect to the elders, past, present, and emerging. Thanks, Ravina. Marie, we as a commission have been travelling with the assistance of Murray Ministry up to the community of Sherberg since 2017. Could you tell us why? Yes, we started, Peter, because a piece of research was published comparing living standards across Australia. It identified Sherberg as the most disadvantaged local government area in Australia. We already knew Sherberg had many challenges and we wanted to be with the people to listen to their experiences and stories, their feelings, their hopes and dreams, and to understand their culture and spirituality. We weren't going up to solve the problems for them, just to listen and support them as they addressed their problems. We were inspired by Pope Francis's call for the church to get out onto the streets and to be with people in the midst of their daily lives and concerns, rather than keeping comfortable behind the walls of our churches. Marie and Ravina, in that time, we've learned a lot about the Sherberg community. We know that people from over 50 different tribal groups were forced to come from all over Queensland to settle in that place and mistreated in many ways over many decades. We've seen a lot of trauma in terms of high suicide rates, especially among young people, many people dying at a much younger age than the rest of the Australian community, high unemployment rates, a lot of sickness, a lot of people mixed up in the criminal justice system. But we've also seen a lot of good things from the community trying to respond to the problems. The great initiatives that come out of the Ration Shed Museum, the Sherberg State School, St Joseph's School at Mergen, 
the Gundu Early Childhood Centre, the work of the local justice group and the mental health programs of the local health service. Um, we, we've been tapping into much more than the, the data about what's happening for people in Schuberg though. We've been listening to their feelings and emotions and trying to listen to our own feelings and emotions as we hear that. Uh, there's lots of problems, but also lots of hope in that community. Ravina, do you want to tell us a bit about your experience of the feelings, the hopes and dreams in the Sherbrooke community? Yes, look, I, um, after travelling there for many years and having family relatives from uh, Sherbrooke, I've seen um, a lot of changes. And I guess for a lot of the changes that, um, that I'm really keen to see how it's going to move forward is especially for the young people, where the young people give us hope. When I see the young people involved in doing the pottery there with the elders, and I see them, the women there sitting there sewing with the, the older women of the community. There's so much beautiful art and talent coming from the community. And I think they pick up on the richness of their culture and the gifts that they bring for each and every one of us to share, to enlighten them of that's their community, that's their spirituality, and that's, that's where they belong. And that's their home, is Sherberg. So we've learned a lot about the Sherberg community in the last five years. But Marie, we keep going back uh, to listen patiently, to sit and hear people's stories. Some people come to places like Sherberg with a project already developed, thinking they can fix Sherberg's problems. There is no respect in that. We have gone just to listen repeatedly and patiently. It's about building trust and supporting the community to develop their own initiatives and to be involved in taking action to address the problems. And Ravina, lots of groups go to places like Schuberg with the best of intentions, but often they end up putting burdens on the community, making the community serve their interests rather than serving the community. Could you talk a bit about that, please? Yes, um, at times we often think what's best for us, but we forget um, what's happening, what's going on within that community, especially around a lot of their, um, their sorry time. And so we often um, add extra workload, I guess, to the community um, while they're trying to do um, grieving with the family and as a family and as a community. So I think that we've just got to be mindful about um, when we go into the community, what is our expectations of that community on, on providing needs for what our needs are or others. Marie, our fundamental motivation is love. We're not going to Sherberg as if it's a museum or a zoo to observe people, to show them pity. Can you talk to me a bit about how uh, approach. Peter and Ravina, we, we listen to Jesus who says that serving and supporting people like our friends in Sherberg is serving him. We are not arrogant, we do not pity, we do not think we know better, we come to serve and support. It is a privilege for us to serve the people of Sherberg and we learn so much that makes us better people too. It's a privilege to accompany them to walk together and just to sit and listen to their stories. And Ravina, we keep going back to Sherberg to continue to listen to stories. It's not turning up once and working out what the situation is and solve the problem. We need to keep going back to build trust. Can you talk a bit about that, please? Yes, um, it's really important within our culture for us to develop that bond and that trust and that faith in, in a person to be able to share in their personal journey and their issues so that they feel comfortable as a community as well to be able to engage with the wider community and the outside community. It's real important, it's part of our, our culture 
as well, and it's um, it's necessary for us to build that that friendship and that bond before um, engaging. Mm. And Ravina, we've been up there quite a few times already, but we need to go back again because quite a few things have happened in recent months. Could you talk about that, please? Yes. So in the uh, recent months, there's been a lot of uh, youth suicides. There's been a, a lot of um, elders that have been passing away. We we just need to be able to go and engage and have that conversation openly with people to let them know that we're here to walk with them and we're here to, to guide them if they need any extra support. Um, what can we offer to the community? We're not coming in there to save the community, but we're coming in there to be a friend um, and to be able to show, you know, we're here as, um, as a church as well. We're here to bring hope. Of course, COVID-19 and the flooding has had impacts there in Sherberg mm -hmm. as well, Ravina and, and Marie. Uh, so we're planning to go back again after Easter and we need to, to see how they're feeling after all those things that have been happening that you've mentioned. So before we do that, we're going to spend a little time in prayerful reflection about what we've learned from our trips to Schoenberg so far before we plan the next steps. Thanks, Ravina and Marie. Thanks, Peter.